Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Um, I was going to write this. Um, I was going to write this down today, but I decided that it wouldn't be best for me to write it down because I've told the story on a few different occasions in a few different places, and I always think the best way to tell it is off the top of my head. Right, I was born in um, I was born in uh, Brixton, in East Dulwich Hospital. I lived, um, left the hospital and went to Mayo Road, actually it's on my birth certificate, 47 Mayo Road. And um, I come from a nice family, um, on my mum's side and um, on my dad's side as well, because they're both Christians, like um, most of my ancestors are actually. And um, I grew up in Lambeth Walk. I grew up in a family with um, just me, my mum, my older brother, he's three years older than me. My sister was six years older than me. My dad was a habitual criminal. He was, um, my dad was a gangster actually, and he's still kind of like in the game. And uh, that was the role model that I had as I was growing up. Um, but he never really used to live with me, so he used to just come and go whenever he pleased. And um, he used to always be in and out of prison. And um, I grew up in Lambeth Walk, actually, even though I was born in Brixton, I lived there when I was about three years old. I grew up in Lam Lambeth Walk, where the, um, the area is mostly populated with like, mostly white people, actually, and say about 30% black. And a lot of them were kind of like from the wrong side of the fence as well. There's mostly like burglars, thieves, robbers, and um, mostly like criminals. All of the people that I knew anyway, like, I didn't really know the people that used to work. And if they did used to work and things like that, they weren't really the kind of people that I'd really want to be associated with because my role models was the people that had power, that had respect, that people looked up to. That's the kind of people that really influenced me, even though it was a negative role models, but that's the kind of person I wanted to be. And everybody that I knew kind of like that grew up in the same environment, that was as far as that their aspirations really went. Anybody that used to be working or had a job or anything like that, people used to laugh at them and call them stupid and think that they was like idiotic because they could earn more money doing other things. And uh, I went to Vauxhall Primary School, there weren't that much money and that in my family when I was growing up, so like food and clothes and things like that was like hard to come by. At Christmas time, there wasn't much toys and anything like that, but there was love. But love in a sense where um, I would never be called as a kid and be given a cuddle and given a kiss and say, well done or anything like that, you know? And I think retrospectively looking back at it now, it's because that's not the way that my parents was brought up, so that was alien to them. Like, because they would never be in a position where they'd be in touch with their feelings, so to show emotions and things like that was a no-no. And that was the end of the story, yeah? So, um, I went to Pimlico School, I went to Vauxhall School initially, and I went to Pimlico School after that. And everything was all right in the beginning, but um, leaving the primary school and going to a uh, secondary school is a big kind of like, challenge is a big change as well and human beings don't like change so for an 11 12 year old kid to be leaving Vauxhall and going to Pimlico school was a big change and so um, I went to school and initially things started to be okay but then I didn't like um, I didn't like the person who I was really internally I didn't like feeling like how I felt and I didn't like being like um, where I was at that time either and um, so in order to fit in with other boys, which I now know was um, significant acceptance and security, I started to smoke weed like from about 14 years old, I think it was. Even though before that, I used to um, sniff glue, I used to take um, Tipex thinner, we used to smoke cigarettes in the beginning, we used to smoke weed, and things just kind of like progressed. I don't know if it was an acceptance of significance in the security team, but that's what I believe now, because I've, I've been in around rehab for nine months and I've dealt with the root cause of what I think my prediction was about. But anyway, I'll get back to the, what I was just saying. So from 15, 16 year old, I didn't really feel like I could be myself. So weed made me feel okay. It made me feel accepted. It made me feel like I'd fit it in. And that's what I'd watch my mum and my dad and that do as they was growing up as well and their friends that used to come round on a Friday and Saturday night. Yeah, they used to get out a bottle of brandy or a bottle of wine or whatever, send down the shop and get a couple of cans of lager. 
they used to smoke weed and so it was a natural thing as far as I would have been concerned because they used to do it. They never used to do it in the sense where it became, their lives became unmanageable. Maybe over a weekend they'd sit down and smoke a couple of spliffs and talk and as adults used to do. So I never really thought it was wrong and when I was sniffing glue and um, Tipex Finnell and that, my dad found out about it and he came out to see me. I think I was just turning 15 this time and um, he said to me that I shouldn't be um, sniffing glue and that and I said this before and everyone laughed at it. He said to me, um, black people don't, s don't sniff glue. He said, black people smoke weed. <laughs> <laughs> and he said to me, um, so like, it'd be more preferably, preferably for you and you, it'd be more accepted if you started smoking weed. So the next day I went out with my friend and we bought some weed and I started smoking weed. And uh, my mum and dad used to drink these little kind cans of special brew that was about at the time. This is going back in the, in the 80s, isn't it? Yeah, early 80s. So I started to buy um, cans of special brew and that as well. And when I used to have a spliff and smoke um, and have a drink and that, it used to make me feel cool, man. I used to think, like, I fit it in. Like, you know, people used to look at you kind of like differently and I could kind of relax, like all my barriers would come down and I could just chill and be like thinking that I was in the present moment and everything was nice. And so that's the kind of like boy that I started hanging around with and I started to be a thief because that's the people that was right around me, that's the people that I knew. My role models was boys that was three and six years older than me and that's, that, that's all that they was in. And my dad was, my dad was a living criminal. So that was kind of like my path was set out from there. And he was good at being a criminal as well. If you used to see the stuff that he used to have, if you used to look at his clothes and his jewelry and his car and things like that, he seemed like he was the man, man, man. And he had respect from everybody. Yeah, he always had money. He always seemed to like, he had presence, he had um, character, he had charisma, he had personality, he had magnetism. People just gravitated towards him. He just had to, if he walked in somewhere, Trust me, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even need to say anything. Everyone would be looking to him, everyone would be saying hello, blah, blah, they'd be running over to him. Like, he, he wouldn't need to say a word. If you just looked at his attire and his clothes and all that, he had hats that, like, his hats used to be like, um, what them, them Jews, um, Orthodox Jews wear them round hats, the ones that have got the, um, he used to go to Harrods and buy these hats, man. Um, cashmere, they was. And if you saw his suits that he used to wear, and his silk shirts, silk ties, four rounds gold chaparita, two sovereigns, a gold watch, crocodile skin shoes, lizard skin shoes, <laughs> snake skin shoes. <laughs> he used to drive a BMW like he was the man, man, trust me. In Brixton he had respect of all of the old gangsters, older than him, younger than him, all the youths and everybody. He knew, he had, he had it all. That's what any, any, any young kid growing up and looking at their dad and thinking to myself, yeah, man, that's what I want to be, you know? I want to be on that train there, man. He used to go to prison, yeah? But that was a minor, yeah? Seriously, like, it was an occupational, it was an occupational hazard, yeah? That was a price that he had to pay and it didn't used to bother him. He never complained about it. I don't know what it was like when he was in prison, but I didn't hear no complaints about it. And he just used to go missing, and when he used to come out, there'd be a big party, and everyone would celebrate. And I used to think to myself, wow, oh, that's what I'm gonna be, definitely. So when I was 15 and started smoking weed and drinking when I used to go to school, I thought, so yeah, I was arriving. And my dad used to buy little bits of clothes for me. I used to get school grants and that. But then I started to thief myself because some of my friends started doing burglaries and robberies. Other guys were doing other things. The older guys that was older than us, they was robbing post offices at the time and snatching the cash bags around and doing wage snatches and things like that. And same with them. No one ever used to really complain about going to jail. It used to just be an like, occupational hazard. Because I used to think to myself, I wonder they used to think when they was committing crime, like if it's going to go pear shape, if it's going to go to jail. They didn't think about it. If it happened, it happened. If it didn't happen, wow, everyone enjoyed themselves. So once I hit 15 uh, and I started, to, um, I started to do robberies myself, done a couple of burglaries and that, but I weren't good at burglary. I got nicked, um, I think, the second or the third time I'd done a drum. And it, to me, it was a long thing, like waiting about and going in someone's house and being in there, turning over everything, looking for money or jewelry or anything that's been hidden. Used to, I don't know if it was fear that made me not want to go into that market, but I knew loads of boys that were burglars and they had good touches all the time. They always had money. But 
the robbers were the ones that used to have even more money and that's the kind of like I thought to myself, yeah that looks like a good job because the robbery can happen in two seconds and then two seconds later you can be gone. And that's what I used to do. I used to be a robber man in Lambeth, all over the place, like Brixton, Stockwell and Clapham. Me and a few other boys from Brixton, Stockwell and Clapham, like guys used to come to Lambeth Hall just to hang about every little crew because we was that serious man. Whenever we used to um, injure anybody or anything like that, we had our technique roll down that it used to work like quick time. It was an element of surprise and it used to work. And so I used to keep smoking weed and drinking and then sniff cocaine came in when I was about 17 years old. 